CW7's coming down. How much more data do you need? It's not about the CW7, it's about Gemini and what it's doing to the atmosphere and to us. Nima's on top of all that. He wouldn't launch if it wasn't safe. Okay, well, we just need to run these new numbers and make sure. And do that. Admiral, do you have an ETA on Snowpiercer? You're in luck. Just a couple hours out. Great. When it arrives, I'm going aboard to see Ben. I understand you're feeling a little homesick, but Nima needs that data. The window's very tight. Well, fair warning, Admiral. I'd be prepared to delay the launch. For how long? Let me run these numbers and we'll see. I'll be down in the lab. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And this is Panels the Pixels podcast. This is a spoiler full pod. I love trying to say that. This is a spoiler full podcast about Snowpiercer season four, episode seven, A Moth to a Flame. And that wonderful synopsis for this episode, Becky. So Leighton learns who is responsible for the experiments on Josie and Liana before also finding out who froze the world. Big Alice approaches New Eden, but can't cross the booby-trapped bridge. Yep. And as always, listeners, this is a casual conversation lately, and we kind of go things in and out of context, so we already said spoilers. So if you haven't watched the episode, go back, stop the podcast, unless you're one of those who just love to be spoiled or get angry. Uh, Hang tight and listen. We're going to go in and out of scenes or possibilities of characters and their development, where they come to came to at this point in juncture within the series and the show, especially within the season and where we're at at this season. And uh, we had a few big surprises. A few. God. Yeah. This episode was packed with it. It was packed with it. We got Melanie back. Come on. I, I love the fact that we got Jennifer Connelly back. She just brightens the show. Uh, she was the reason why the show was started. And initially, if you think about it, when they were promoting it, they yeah. were like putting her forefront, Davi Diggs. And then everybody else was uh, pure cake, uh, especially. Oh, I'm forgetting somebody from. And it was in the very beginning. And you could correct me. Uh, he was in The Walking Dead. Uh, Pike. Stephen Og. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Or Og, depending on how you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I say Og. Ben Beck That's says, how I would say it. Uh, ben Beck says Og. I don't know. And I never really got a chance to. I didn't actually. I met him once. Got a picture with him, got his autograph out of Walker Stalker, but never asked him, hey, how do you pronounce your name? But then again, we won't Next know. Next time. Steven, if you're out there, let us know. Yes, please. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, we got some, we got Melanie back. Uh, we did get uh, some surprising details about Milius. Yes, that's the first thing on my list. So let's talk about that. So. In the very beginning of the episode, we go three years back before, and uh, it was like a little self-discovery about things and himself as he's talking through with his narrative and how the toxins come into play. And then Mm -hmm. his wife, in the the event, winds up getting sacrificed. And uh, I think that's where that whole love speech was from last episode. Well, she episode. ratted him out. Yes. And it was a deception. So yeah. that's where and I was getting at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I see why he's a bitter. little bit bitter and yeah. Yeah. focused on people betraying him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he literally just, he put the mask on and it just doused them all with the, the gas and guessed them out. Uh, he was a captain, and it made himself admiral at mm-hmm. that point. <laughs> Self-promoting there. Self-promoting. 
uh, very much almost like how Wilfred is too. Mm -hmm. But the caveat to that is why he promoted himself to that for the fact that he also was helpful in the destruction of the world. What a dick. <laughs> I mm. yeah yeah that, that's the first words i i love sean bean as an actor he plays these characters perfectly he's a villain but what a dick move and to show your prowess as uh, uh like somebody who is entitled and rich yeah. and and then on top of that like making yourself the savior of the world by creating these trains mm -hmm. and then trying to encapsulate and repopulate the world. And I, I don't know if it's an Ebenezer Scrooge thing where you just have to get rid of the mass to let the smaller amount of people survive and to rule over them. Uh, I'm sure there's better wording in that, and honestly, there is, and I'm misreading or misreciting it, everybody. But the, the way he's, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge states it in A Christmas Tale, it, it's so, it's chilling. And yeah. this is literally what this man has done. He's like, he created this, this, like, frozen apocalypse for the world and chose specific people to live. Because if you remember in the days in the, in the very beginning of Snowpiercer, you had the upper class, you had the mm -hmm. middle class, and then you had the tailies. So the tailies did all the freaking work and did everything that needed to be done. You had the middle class that did the mediocre stuff that catered to the upper class. And then the upper class lived lavishly. But yet he was not on that train. He was no, not. but but he allowed the illusion, the illusion to continue of the that elite. he was that even even though he wasn't on that train, the and nobody saw him. Just the mere mention of his name and you know, fear it it affected all of these people and that just goes to show yeah what a powerful being he really he is he made himself like a god yeah if you think about it in a world of so few people on a train that was going around <laughs> uh, every revolution and seeing the world in its own apocalyptic phase where you had your lavishments and then you have your worst nightmare in the back end and uh and they and i i i like saying in the sense that throughout the seasons that we've had the show all of them have come together in some way shape or form to develop a community mm -hmm. which he did not fathom at a certain point and it wasn't until uh, Milius's people started creating these rockets and bombs and everything to create a new world uh, to start to change the world a little bit. And then people could do the, have these pockets of Eden, as I like to call it. But, uh, and, but he wants to take full on, <laughs> you know, credit for what he has done. Yeah, he says it multiple times in the episode, hints that, you know, he's he's the one who, he's what he says something about, I'm the one who built the ark, and I'm the one who will save these people. He really, he believes in it, he believes his own hype, and yeah, he, yeah, does not care about the people that helped. Yeah. He, Get him he, there because he could not have done that all on his own. He created the new world in his own mind. He's a legend yeah. in his own mind. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all right. But the thing is, is that there are those people that do believe that to a certain degree. But you have the two opposite ends of the coin. <laughs> you have Milius and you have Wolford. 
And what do we have at the end of this episode? <laughs> Uh, an epic showdown between Milius and Wilford. Do we want to talk about that now, or do we want to? Oh, we said a spoiler before film. we get there. Uh, there, there are key moments that I do admire and love within the episode too, but uh, it does go into what's going to happen later on in the next episode. But we could top on that. You know, literally, it's like these two went to head to head. Like I had said before, it was a game of poker. Uh, the last person that Wolfert sees and before he gets sucked up with the gas at the very end is Leighton, mm -hmm. which would have been the savior of the world. But within the episode, he talks about Alex as being the new savior of these people too he keeps in incorporating that and this is something that i had stated before in, pre in the previous podcast and i think that's literally what they're setting us up for it looks like you're you're right about that i i however go ahead and we'll see if i'm wrong i don't believe that that's how wilford's gonna go out i don't okay if he pops up Again, later on, I would not be surprised because that while that was, you know, the showdown between him and Milius mm -hmm. and Milius thinking he's got the upper hand and uh, taunting Wilford. And then all of a sudden, Wilford's like, oh, by the way, I'm good. And then <laughs> that was such a big crescendo uh big bravado and big just huge moment and then he just and you were right about the case by the way mm. um that case did end up being very important but he just likes a poison blunt like Leighton says and that's how he goes I just don't you don't if buy that's it? how it ends that's how it ends but I am disappointed in that but I think I think he'll show up again because he's he can take gas. Hegwood's I don't know. Just as much as much experimenting as he's done on himself, I find it hard to believe that he's going to A commit suicide and B, he's gonna go out smoking a poisoned blunt. Or he, I don't or know. Your rain, yeah, I think uh, uh, we won't know. But the thing is, if he does, where is he lie with Melanie, Leighton, Alex, uh, the rest of the people, Ruth, everything on Snowpiercer and Big Alice at that point? If they're able to take over with the military and just take over and get everything 100%, neutralize every bomb known to man that they've already set up, supposedly. And who knows if that's just a ploy. And, uh, you know, it, to me, I'm like, you know, some could go off, but did they get everything? Did they yeah. really put this into place? But, yeah, it, it's that that's on Milius at that point. But with Wilford, yeah, he. I, I hate saying it. He's Willy Wonka. He's the ultimate con man. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, yeah, if you know, I not not to uh really sour everybody's you know kids' relationship with Willy Wonka and the chocolate <laughs> factory, but Willy Wonka, if you think about it, was a con man. Well, Wilford is a con man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely a con man. Yes, it's for self gain and for self preservation, as well as making himself almost like a deity a god in this world where not only was he the creator of the tragedy of the world succumbing to an ice age, but also like having people survive for this and then taking like pleasure and saying, I helped you. <laughs> and to me, I'm like, Oh my goodness. He is self obsessed. And mm -hmm. I don't think he would go out with such ease. It it just seems I don't know. Yeah, I'm interested to see if if 
I'm right or not. And I will tell you, I told you so. Um, <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I agree with that statement, too. Uh, I'm sure you will. And you'd be like, I told you so. Yeah, you told me so. Yay. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, but in light of that, we had some great moments within this episode, too. And I'm not talking about like the great scenes that we get, the great quotes that we get. I'm talking about like with Ruth and Till and Big Alice. I made a note here that I am so happy the writers chose to put those two together. Yeah. This season. I don't know what it is, but it's their the chemistry hardest, it's is the two hardest people or personalities to put together at that point. And they're yeah. able to work with one another and mesh well. And As, care, lift each other up when yes. you know Ruth needed that pep talk to finish the, you know, hurrah for the, the troops. And then, you know, then Till is now very sad and wondering if she'll ever get to see Audrey again. And Ruth puts on Audrey's album and they just yeah. share them out. They just, without even saying a word, they just yeah say so much. And I, that is one of my favorite, the favorite character links that the writers have done this season. I love it. I, I love that scene for the fact that she puts on the record because Till asked Ruth, uh well what happened to her well she's got a lot of scars on her face and the smoke got into her lungs and her he was like where was her voice affected and literally yeah. ruth just goes now the the train is stopped at that point they have energy but she winds up putting on the record and handing till the cover jacket of the vinyl and she's hugging it yeah um, meaning that she would still have Audrey's voice, if anything, through re recording and hear her Audrey's voice. Audrey's still there, even if she's still there, if it's yeah. gone in the end, but she still has Audrey to herself, which shows to me that the writers are really tugging at our heartstrings mm -hmm. on, on these characters who we love. And I really did enjoy that. It, it, it showed great drama. It showed great love and affection for the characters and for who they are and devoid of any sexuality and, and sexual preference to me, it was just a great love story and mm -hmm. how it is. And it worked out perfectly. And somebody who you think like Ruth, Oh, I, I hated her in season one. She was a bitch. I didn't want to, I want to see her on screen and then literally doing a whole, 360 like completely different like from good to evil or yeah. evil to good actually evil to good everybody <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was good evil in the sense that she thought she was doing right but now she's doing the right by doing the wrong things for the right people yeah and not not to put a twist on it or making me sound like a little crazy but anyhow <laughs> she um she she was doing the right thing and I really do enjoy that. And it's 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 so reassuring about how people could turn around their lives and how also they're accepting of everybody and who they are. And I think we need to have more of that in this world. I agree. I don't want to preach. <laughs> I, I might be a, a, a you know, I, I, I yes, I am a minister of the Universal Life Church, but I'm not here to preach. <laughs> um on the lines along the lines of you know uh, stories that weren't necessarily Wilford and Milius involved I really liked the moment between Alex and Melanie she called her mom yes and that Rowan Blanchard is the actress who plays uh Alex and I think that was her absolute standout mm -hmm. performance of the entire season and how you know she resisted Wilford poisoned her brain against her mom mm -hmm. she resisted her mom's presence for the longest time tug of war with you know 
I like you. I don't like you. And then she has to tell her mom, you know, the love of your life is gone. Oh yeah. That was so Here's hard. what's happening. And she just, and then, then when they, she, you know, I'm sorry, mom. And they hugged and yeah. she cried. That was, I think that was probably the most emotional scene of the episode and it was absolutely beautiful it was much needed after how many seasons Mm -hmm. of them being at odds yeah because when we first see alex she's with wilford on big alice and they literally jump onto snowpiercer trying to take it over and melanie's on the other end with leighton and all this and you know not to go back in time and do the Everybody, you rewind. <laughs> Not to uh, pull a GI Joe on you. Anyhow, but they basically, uh, it, it's like a whole turnaround. It, it's like mother and daughter finally coming together, and there's this understanding and how Alex was being manipulated during that time. And yeah. then her acceptance of her mother. And she needs her mother in life. And that that's the whole thing. And uh, she's just, you know, Alex is just as needed as Melanie is at this point because mm-hmm. she knows so much between both trains and knows what's going on and how to make that world work. Yeah. So, like I said before, I, I kind of said it and coined it like what two episodes ago. We covered the first four episodes and then five and six. And then, you know, literally, Alex is the future of uh, what happens after snowpiercer or should i say new eden or new eden's other communities and we'll see that what (laughs) i'm just making up names oh well well, eventually they will have names uh we don't have them just yet but we'll get them (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah that that to me i really enjoyed that yeah that was one scene I really did enjoy. Uh, I also did like the fact that how uh, Wilford kind of breaks down in front of uh, Leighton during that time. That was uh, it, it. It showed Sean Bean's like acting talent, and I really did it's enjoy such it. a wide range. Yes, yeah, I liked when he was going down after poisoning himself. And then Mel, you know, Nima's gassed Melanie and they go Mm -hmm. back and forth between the two of them as they each are falling towards the ground. Um, I thought that was a really interesting contrast, but I don't, I mean, he said what he said about the the three, what was it, the three points, and how you know yeah. it's in my quotes, uh, yeah. how he missed um, one of the points, and then it, you know, we learned that Nima is actually the mastermind behind so much, and that Wilford saw it. Yeah. Building the entire time. Yeah. Clark Gregg was a really great villain in the show, I think. Very psychotic, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it reminded me of, of all things, Ed Harris in The Rock. Oh, yeah. Now, if you all remember that, yes, we've done this on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. We covered that Ben Beck and I have covered the threesomes of Nick Cage movies. If you all remember the rock face off con air. Well, Ed Harris played a really great character in the rock where he was a villain, but he was also a uh, decorated general at one point and still leading people. And at this point, when they do take over on uh, the rock, which is Alcatraz, 
he's deemed as a villain because he's trying to get money for his men and this and that. And then, uh, you know, Tony Todd, who we all know as Candyman, <laughs> turns around and he goes, I'm not a soldier anymore, sir. I'm a mercenary. And that's literally what it turned into. And then literally it's like, this is how, what happened to Milius at this point. It's like he was working more with his passion and not really seeing the broader side of it for everybody else. And it was more selfish than anything. And towards the end, that was his, uh, you know, he doesn't see the, his own justice of his thoughts. And in the end, in this, unfortunately. But if you watch The Rock, you get to see Ed Harris actually do that. <laughs> that's a great, that's a good movie. Yes, it was. Good comparison. Yeah. But just to, to show a little slight comparison, but had an alternate twist. You know, and it's it, funny, too. You've got these three strong characters, each fighting each other. Mm-hmm. But each one doing the exact same thing they're mad at the other person for. And that's an interesting triangle. It is because you got Leighton, you got Melanie. They're on the same side to some degree. Because they, uh, you get that moment when they, they do finally meet together. They come together and they yes, hug and they like, walk and save and, our people. Exactly. Uh, and New Eden. Um, but you also have Milius and then you have Wolford. And then you have them all coming at odds. And then who's going to come out? Obviously, Melanie and Leighton do come out together and, and for the best for the people of New Eden. And then you got Milius and Wolford. Well, we're not sure about Wolford still. <laughs> so we'll leave that on the back burner, everybody. We'll find out next week. <laughs> but uh Milius is gone. So ding dong, Milius is gone. <laughs> Not yeah. To, yeah. But uh I think a well deserved way. Yeah, I think so too. Um I have uh nothing else but you know the the bomb situation at the end is still an issue with the tracks they have to find the bombs and it keeps sweeping and you got ruth and till still stuck and the people of uh, new eden are at their lowest when it comes to batteries and everything else and power so that's why they were at a dead silence towards the end and you could see how it was ringing on till and ruth at that point she goes, they're not picking up because they're trying to sweep for the bombs. And they're- I liked Javi stepping up this episode. It was nice to see him become a leader oh, and, yeah. you know, tell everyone when the people of New Eden realize something's wrong and he's, yes, he's honest. We're working on it. Everybody calm down. Everything's going to be okay. And, and calmed it down and then took the, took the lead when they're going to sweep the bridge and they do find, find the bomb. I still don't understand why they want to bomb new Eden. So I'm really hoping we get an explanation there, but I like seeing Javi step up. That was, yeah, that was nice to see. Um, something else to talk about. I'm, Curious what your thoughts are. I figured once um, Milius took Wilford to the frozen floor Mm -hmm. that he was planning on Wilford freezing to death. And it kind of clicked that Wilford's Hmm. gotten all these treatments and whatnot. But I still don't. Okay. Did Liana get whatever this treatment is? You know, they noticed she had the Band-Aid. Mm-hmm. on her hand and it was yeah. an IV. Did they give her something? And with Josie, were they giving Wilford her blood or were they mixing them? I really wish they would have given us a little bit more of a background on that. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of detail and a lot of this is where I'm like skeptical like you about Wilford, about the gas and everything else. 
maybe he's immune to a lot of this stuff because uh, I have it in here in some notes, and I got this from the Vulture, and uh, not to cheat everybody, but, <laughs> uh, the Vulture, uh, which is uh, off the New York Post, which I think is kind of funny, but I, I love how they put their notes in. So I had to steal a little. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, Nemus Treachery is Wolford himself. The only person with an ego and pride to match him, uh, to match Nima at that point. So which that is true. Wolford also sneaks on board Snowpiercer from the outside. He is quite literally immune to all the cold, but without icy Bob's mutant look. <laughs> that there is information of like, yeah, I just realized that he was able to come out from outside the cold and not have a blemish on his face like some frost scars or anything like that. And, uh, yeah. And then we got Leighton is back there waiting for him and this is it, you know, and after so much pain and suffering and uh, deliciously evil charm, this is the end of Joseph Wilford quote unquote, everybody think about it. He survived the freaking cold. There's something going on. Something's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just love how he, yeah, you know, Wilfred starts rambling about Buddhism and vices and the the right before he dies. Uh, Wilfred leaves us with one less big reveal and saying Nemo is always the threat, not the admiral. Kind of like a twist of event and not himself. And Nemo was proud to see the error of his ways. Yet again, it was he who launched the CW7 and froze the world. So it's like, blame Nima, but yeah, I did this too, but who cares? <laughs> that attitude, you know? Well, I've been, it, it adds, uh, it adds another link into the chain of people who are doing things for their own. Self Good. Needs. And when yeah. he told Melanie, when Nima told Melanie that he's been working on this for 15 years and she's like, wait a minute, we've only been doing this for nine. And he basically just said, OK, well, I I I did this and I am going to fix it. We are going to launch these missiles again. He's not thinking about humanity mm -hmm. he's simply trying to i don't know if he's if it's undo what he created or what but it, he's it's an it's it's just like wilford goes away will in steps milius milius goes away will in steps layton and layton layton is goes away and in steps nema it's just a constant revolving door of people who are only looking out for themselves yeah. in the trail of destruction that they're leaving behind. Yeah, they, it's all for their own self-need at this point, but for Leighton and Melanie at this point, even Alex, it's all for New Eden. Everybody else between Milius and and, Wol and Wolford itself is like I'm saying it's it's like how you look at a missile. What does a missile look like? Big penis. There, okay, there. I was wanting to say that. I was thinking that in my head. I think about <laughs> that every time I look at that space rocket thing. Yeah. Um, that it looks I, like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's like, like if you're uh, not going there, I'm confused. I don't know what it, to say. Anything. It's, it's masculine jargon at its worst when it comes to war or imposing on others. I hate saying it. It's almost like, not to be political, but you got one former president and wants to be president again. And he, he just like, see it, look at it, enjoy it. Uh, you got other people out there on the opposing side that are just showing everything that they need to, which is pretty much in the same representation. Now I, I hate politics, everybody. Trust me. I think every politician is terrible. Whether you're, a Democrat, Republican, or <laughs> anything in between, independent. Uh, but it's like I I just can't stand it. It's like it's like all this. It's like 
don't talk about it, prove it. Yeah. And a lot of these people, and if you look at Wilford, he's not proving it. Milius was not really proving it in any way. What they were doing literally was proving the quite opposite of what they wanted to get for themselves. But whereas with Leighton and, and Melanie and Alex, what they needed to do for New Eden, they did what they had to. Yes, it was to some extreme, but it worked out. Yeah. Um, whether or not we see... Uh, I- I'm going to use this and people will laugh, but Cobra Commander, Mr. Wilford that himself. G.I. Joe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wilford come out saying, I'm back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the best leader you got. Yeah, yeah, to make a joke, but regardless, uh, because it's it's the typical uh, forked tongue reptilian politician's voice that comes out, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a comeback. If he comes back with a bunch of other, um. Guys who are like can fight the frozen Arctic <laughs> like he does with his blood, like a troop. You better turn that around and help these people out that are having problems too in New Eden. Yeah. Actually, or, do what you said you wanted to do and save the, the world. world. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, I'm uh, like I said, we only have. X amount of episodes left. I think we said 10, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got three more episodes, everybody. <laughs> yeah, my uh here's what I wrote for my final thoughts. Good. Um I said last week's was the best, but now I think this week's was the best episode. <laughs> Melanie's back. <laughs> well. That's a given, in my opinion. It's like Melanie's back, and I knew that was going to happen. I, I I think I kind of predicted that when we were talking about the first four episodes. Yeah. We haven't really seen much of Melanie. I want, I want Jennifer Connelly back. And then we <laughs> finally got her back. It's like, yeah, yeah I told you so. They were going to bring her back towards the end. <laughs> and they did. You, and they did. Um, so Melanie's back. Wilford and Milius are gone. Though I would not would not be surprised if Wilford comes back. Seems too easy for him to go out like that. Mm-hmm. Leighton, Liana, and Josie are stuck. Big Alice can't get back to New Eden, and time mm-hmm. is running out for that crew. The writers put so much into this episode. I'm even more curious now to see what on earth they're going to do with the three remaining episodes. Hmm. And you have it correct. I'm really wanting I'm wanting to say it's like if only they gave us a Netflix thing at the end, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not allowed to watch that, everybody. And we didn't AMC, please give us screeners. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. It would be nice of you. We are looking for it. So if you guys are out there, I will put out forth again because I've done this before. I tried it with Fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> oh ooh. yeah i know yeah becky's like oh why would you do that oh my god what's <laughs> wrong with you uh i i tried this with interview actually after the first season and i never got a response i will try again i i will try that again through adrenaline cinema podcast uh for panels to pixels podcast it, well obviously we're in its final season for snowpiercer but we'll try for uh for adrenaline for when we do anything that's other amc related like <clears throat> uh interview with a vampire season <clears throat> three <laughs> it's gonna be so good it's gonna be good but uh that's another podcast altogether everybody but uh, we're hoping that we kind of turned you and got you listening to that because we do enjoy it and keep listening too because we'll talk about me for witches later anyhow uh, not, you Mayfair, any? not Mayfair Witchers, Mayfair Witches. We already did The Witcher. <laughs> Is that any good? Uh, 
what the first three seasons were pretty good, and once they got rid of Henry Cavill, uh, it wasn't that good at all. Okay, anymore. <laughs> it's on my list. It's just not one that's towards the top. Yeah, I, I really did enjoy Henry Cavill, uh, all the interactions and what we got out of the seasons, but um, yeah. Lara and Steve had covered that on here on Panels to Pixels podcast and had a good time. And uh, I covered a bit of it too in the very beginning. Uh, they went off the rails once they got rid of Cavill. So that that's my thoughts. That's the reason why we never went back, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch the remaining seasons. And if you want us, it, it, if people want to put a poll together and say, we want to hear what you really think of the last season, I'll have to binge watch it and maybe have Steve and Lara come on and we could really pummel it because literally that's what we're probably going to do because every other word out of our mouth is it's not Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. But, um, Aside from that, we, we kind of digress, but uh, sorry about that, everyone. Um, uh, but let, let's get back into this. Uh, th- were there any other notes or anything? Uh, what you're looking forward to for next episode? I just. I want to see how Leighton, Josie and Liana get out of their situation and I'm very curious because it's going to start getting really cold. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if Liana shows any signs of freezing and that will let us know whether or not she was experimented on. Um, Yep. That that'll be a dead giveaway. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) it's like, hold on. She's kind of warm to the touch. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This kid burns hot. Uh, curious about. I be- I believe that Big Alice is going to make it back to New Eden. I don't think that explosion was Javi blowing up. I think it was more like a, you know, at the end of the. What's his uh, The Batman with. um. <laughs> You know, where he takes the <laughs> the bomb and drops it into the middle of the um the the sea. I yeah, think that uh, Hobby yeah. like tossed it or something. And yes, it exploded, but it's called a Christian Bale. Christian Bale, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could. <laughs> and then next thing you know, he's hanging out with uh, you know, what's her name? <laughs> in oh, France, um, Catwoman <laughs> and Hathaway. Yes, in France. Actually, I'm blanking on all names tonight. Same here, too. But the thing is, it's like I, I had to remember it. Anne Hathaway, Michael Caine's going, "Cheers, mate," and it's like, <laughs> "No, uh, hold on, how the hell did you get away?" It's called the bat repellent. I have a special suit. <laughs> they better oh, not you're going back. back to the um Adam West it? days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, I don't know if you that was the shark remember Nick everybody. at night. I do remember Nick at night. I never really watched it all that often. It was that was my summers <laughs> when we could stay up late and Nick at night would show those old school Batman reruns, and that is where my love of Batman began and then it just skyrocketed when 89 came out. Uh, anyway, sorry guys, I'm, I keep I am all over the place tonight. So, do you have any thoughts on this at final thoughts on this episode or what you want to see next week? Uh, what I would like to see is Liana actually not suffering from the cold. Uh, all experimentation done on her was done, and they'll have to utilize and catalyze her blood as a source to for people to survive. I'm not talking about late. Well, Leighton himself because he has the same, probably the same blood type. Unfortunately, Melanie not so much. <laughs> right, but they could take it and make a serum. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I have a funny feeling there's going to be somebody coming to the rescue at a certain point. 
I wonder, I'm curious to see who it will be because they, they're not, I don't think they're going to let them freeze to death. They're so. not going to let them freeze to death. I, I really do think so. And if it's freaking Wilford, I will scream at the <laughs> TV and hold on, hold on. I got it. I told you. <laughs> you get a text from me next Sunday. Next Sunday, it'd be Friday when you have AMC Plus. <laughs> yeah, I still wait till Sunday to watch it. Oh, you still do? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I, I have to do my due diligence and make sure I find uh, some way to get the audio for the uh, the episode. So I have to make sure I obtain a copy <laughs> in some way to uh, rip the audio so we could do oh, our that's intros. Cool. All right. Well, maybe just for you, I'll watch Friday so I can hopefully say I told you so. I I only do a quick watch and everybody knows that my memory is terrible. (laughs) I honestly, it it truly is. I have short, heavy short term memory on anything, but my long term memory, it's scary when it comes to certain things. But um, that, that those are my like, you know, learning disabilities, everybody. But it actually helps me in the end when I come up with some really bad quotes <laughs> for movies. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And also to see New Eden help out uh, Bruce and Till get back where they need to and safely, hopefully. And then uh, see where it starts. Uh, because honestly, we're going to be at episode eight at that point. Mm-hmm. And then we have to see the rebuilding of a new world if they get out of this. Or other worlds or other countries, as it were, if yeah. other rockets show up, who knows what the end result will be? Uh, did Milius have some sort of contingency plan where he had the rockets shoot up at certain areas to drop where it would change the temperature? in certain areas of the world we don't know because is that bunker uh allied with uh other countries yeah it it can't be the only one it can't be the only one so i'm wondering if there's like a network chain within that maybe wolford was part of that who knows but um we won't know until that time yeah I'm only hopeful, everybody. Hopeful. (laughs) But the thing is, is that this is a snowpocalypse, as I like to call it, because it is icy or icepocalypse, whatever. It's an icicle. It's called Snowpiercer. And that's what they're doing. Anyhow, let's move forward. And uh, I don't have any further notes, but I do have some quotes. I've got some too. You want to go ahead and go first? Sure. Mine would be from Milius, and it's in the very beginning. And when he says, since the freeze, there was one thing that kept us alive. An instinct trait in every person who's ever had to rely on a group to survive. Not love, not perseverance. It's loyalty. Which happens in every apocalypse. And we're talking yeah. Walking Dead, everybody, too. Everybody, it's in reference to that. Think about it. Rick Grimes, the governor. You got Negan. So it's very similar because you have leaders. And it's all about loyalty. Mm-hmm. And people are what? Resources. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this time. All right. What do you have? I, I, I'll go one by one. Okay. Uh, my first one is when Alex makes a comment to Wilford about basically begging her to save him. And he says, I've never begged for anything in my life. People beg me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, my goodness. I I, I have one. And this is Wolfer to Alex at that point when they're trapped. And I did not get the audio or music that came from it afterwards, by the way, everybody. I wish I did. 
uh, that oh, din, din, a, din, din, a, din, din, a, din song. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not hip to new pop music or rock music. Anyhow, Wilford to Alex saying, remember that train is your legacy, not your mother's. It's yours to care for. And that was after Alex asked Wolf- Wilford for the headphones and knowing there was only one pair. Now, mind you, is Wilford sacrificing himself and blasting that music encore yeah. <laughs> against the people. <laughs> okay, my next one is this is Milius when he thought he was watching Wilford die and he says, you painted your name across all your trains and now you'll die down here a nobody. Or Maybe your head will make a nice ornament pinned to the front of your precious train. I thought that was brutal I was until <laughs> he got his ass kicked. And I was like, ooh, bad choice of words there. Yeah. 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 To look like a jaguar pendant on the top of a jaguar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frozen right there. Wilford. <laughs> it's like his face. Well, I thought it was prettier than that. Well, no, it's all frozen. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, my last one would be, and that would be Milius to uh, his ever precious scientist who he always has on hand, saying, Do all scientists keep an oath of pessimism? That's a good one. I yeah. like that one too. Uh, my last one. Oh, I'm sorry. I have two more. Good. Uh, first one is. Uh, Wilford tells Leighton, hold my train. And Leighton says, I'm not holding shit for him. <laughs> I laughed, I laughed out loud on that one. To be Diggs landed that perfectly. Perfectly, yeah. It's like hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh when Leighton and Wilford are having their heart to heart, and Wilford's talking about life and Leighton says, there is no mystery. We live, we suffer, we die. Mm. And I thought that was bleak. But <laughs> in Snowpiercer world, for some of a lot of those less fortunate people, that's that's their truth. That is their truth. Uh, it's, it's a really sad life that they all have to live, unfortunately. Yeah. That's the problem with uh, Snowpiercer. It, it is a bleak life, and I feel bad for every character in it. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, but yeah. So uh, right, let's move forward. I'm going to open up a few things so I can make some recommendations. Uh, this is where we'll get into some podcast recommendations. So, uh, do you have any, Rebecca, at this point? Well, you know, I'm a fan of the cast of us doing their Walking Dead rewatch. We are in the thick of the prison and the governor, and that's one of the best seasons out there. Um, I am anxiously waiting for... Penny and Kara to come back with Mm -hmm. still slang. Okay. And um, I've been catching up on some of the movies that you covered with Adrenaline Cinema. Oh. Um, Yeah. And there's other stuff, but those are the ones that pop into my head right now. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, to add to the love that's out there, too, because we, we... uh, for Pyrocore Entertainment uh, with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. And it's funny, too, because Jason had me on for uh, Game Night for the Patreon for Podcast, which is, uh, if you want to contribute to that, it's patreon.com forward slash Jason Gabassi. And uh, you could also be part of that community as well. If you choose to, this is a cheap pop for him, just for me to throw in some support and love. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff on the podcast community and, uh, we had done, uh, Jamie Dimmick and myself had covered, 
uh, the Dead Boy Detectives, and he brought it up, and he goes, "I thought it was a uh, collaborative podcast." I was like, no, no, it was all house podcast. Because so I already mentioned it before. You guys could check that out too. Uh, Jamie and I had a good time. Unfortunately for that particular show, they canceled it on Netflix. So sad. But Jamie and I will be back for Sandman cast, everybody. Yes, the Sandman season two that was originally on Netflix will now be on Amazon Prime. Uh, We're just awaiting that to come out, which will be great. Uh, I would also like to recommend uh, the Revisited podcast. So Kristen and Ben have finally finished the Ted Lasso. Or have they? Have they? Well, there's a rumor that Ted Lasso is going to be back for another season. They will be back for another season, but they've already mentioned that they'll be covering a new show for the Revisited podcast. And that would be the good place that they're going to be covering soon. That is exciting. That is a phenomenal show. So that's a little uh, picker upper. Mm-hmm. Another fun one to watch. I never watched it. Honestly, you should. I should. I should. And I should be following along as I watch it as a first time watcher and then send some feedback and just to give uh, Ben and Kristen some guff about stuff. Yeah, I'll make sure to do that. <laughs> I'll do that too. It's a, it's a, I'll, I'm glad that somebody's covering that one. That's a, yeah, it, it's different. It's, it's a lot of fun. So you can find that on the revisited podcast on the podcastica uh, website, uh, podcastica.com. Or on Wilhelm.com on those feeds as well. So give Ben a little love too for Wilhelm and uh, what he does there too, because uh, they're they're going to be doing a lot more on Wilhelm too. Eventually, he's going to be doing more interviews. Check him out. Uh, you got Cast of the Rings. Oof, you can have fun with that. You got a lot of people listening and watching to that show, and uh, I have not. Unfortunately, I kind of fell off the cast of the rings. I don't know why. But uh, you also have, uh, what else? Oh, the Extraordinary Cast is out there as well with Penny and Greg. So uh, I fall- finally finished up on the podcasts after I watched the show and I binge watched it. And I really do enjoy the show. So if you like English humor, subtle, weird, superhero humor adult humor (laughs) watch it it's fun you can find it on hulu um and then on top of that run for your lives with daphne and paik uh they released recently uh a quiet place day one so uh that's pretty cool uh other than that yeah yeah you you've already mentioned it uh becky about the cast of us uh with the walking dead the ones who live and stuff like that, uh, because they're doing a uh, rewatch of uh, The Walking Dead. And soon they'll be uh, picking up um, Daryl Dixon. Hmm. He's uh, his show will be back. Oh, yes. Yes. The new uh, Walking Dead show, the Daryl Dixon show. They'll, they'll be doing that as well. They'll be covering yeah. that. And uh, uh, of course, there's a new you know, Dead City coming out as well because they wrapped up shooting. Oh, they did? Yeah, they did. So uh, that that's to be expected as well. Just a little time in that uh, post-production and all that good stuff. But uh, th- we're at the point where where could listeners hear us? So obviously, Becky, you always say the same thing. And I was going to again. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I can be. Uh, I can be found wherever Mark will have me. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, she can be found right here on Panels the Pixels podcast as we cover in the remaining episodes of Snowpiercer. Uh, we will be back on Adrenaline Cinema podcast when we do start our coverage of season one. We're going to do a whole one episode of. The season of Mayfair Witches. 
and it might be a bitch fest of Mayfair or Wayfair Mitches, depending. <laughs> uh, uh, it'll be uh, Becky, Billy, Lara, Danny, myself back. So you got the vamp cast back, and I think Lara already came over the catch name for the, the group for this one. But uh, you'll have to keep posted on that when we do it, and it will be out probably within another week or two. So just to let you know. Uh, and yes, the last vamp cast episode will be up exclusively on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So uh, I'll have that completely edited up and you could listen to our coverage of uh, Queen of the Damned and then we'll lead in and then we'll be back, everybody, for podcast uh, and for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast when we do interview with a vampire season three. And hopefully they'll call it something different instead of just interview with the vampire because. I don't know. Will stop be interviewed throughout it? Because in that promo, he was interviewed to some degree, and then he was choking somebody or making somebody a <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll lean into one of her books that are Lestat-focused. If it's not the book of Lestat, um, I do think they'll give it... It'll still be Interview with the Vampire, but I do think they'll add a little something that... I'll shoot it. For yeah. Lestat. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm hoping to see if they actually change the name a little bit, but we'll see. Uh as always, you could hear me here on Panels the Pixels podcast, right here with Becky and us doing our Snowpiercer coverage for the last season of uh Snowpiercer season four. Uh myself as well, and you'll hear episodes again. I launched a bunch and everybody's like, wait, you dropped like two episodes in one night. How did you do that? And why did you do that? Well, because I'm back high behind everybody. We get involved with work and work life experience and all that good stuff. So I got I gave you what you needed. So you got something to listen to, it, and you're gonna get something in another couple of days. Yes, Steve and I will be back with the Umbrella Academy for the episode three. This week to record, you'll get that promo and you'll get season uh, episode two, which I actually will be finalized and finishing up as well, dropping on Friday. So awesome. Uh, so you'll you'll be getting that we will be a little bit more consistent. I'm trying to get there, everybody. Trust me. Trust me. I'm doing a lot He's of editing. working hard. I'm working hard, uh, working hard for my money and also working hard here. Try for you. Anyhow. Uh, I'm also doing Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. We already mentioned the Mayfair Witches. We're getting those uh, episodes up for Mayfair, uh, for Mayfair Witches and Queen of the Damned. Uh, Billy and myself will probably be doing Long Legs, which is a very dark film that just came out recently that has Alicia Witt, Nicolas Cage, and a few other people that are really good. And it's being heralded as one of the best bone-chilling horror movies out in 2024 so i highly recommend it uh you guys got um a bunch of other films that are coming out too that i really am looking forward to doing i still want to do demolition man i'm looking forward to it. i have to actually get back in touch with rob and say hey rob what's the deal yo what's going on are we going to do demolition man we got to get that out i want to go back old school i want to go back let's go to robocop Let's do all that cool stuff, all that action stuff we got from the 80s. Uh, and especially if you guys have any feedback as well, too, because I like getting feedback. And if you are a uh, a collector of like toys, action figures of things of that nature, they had a RoboCop one out. And had Alex Murphy all blown it up. <laughs> <laughs> they got one. It's a McFarlane toy. It's out there. I had a friend who got Peter Weller to actually sign it, which is so awesome. So if you have something like that and you want to talk about that stuff, let us know, too, because I like that stuff as well. Anyhow, you can find me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as always. Uh, we do uh, action, adventure, movie suspense, thriller films, anything else that gets your uh, drama moving. Film Tropolis will be coming out soon. Hopefully, uh, Rob will get that done by the end of October and we get to you and have something out there for you uh, that you can enjoy. 
and then uh, we could keep going week to week to week, and you'll have at least a few episodes that you like. But uh, and I already mentioned a little bit about feedback, but if you want to leave any feedback, and I have put the images out there, everybody, you all have you all know the deal. Facebook and Instagram, facebook.com slash panels to pixels, or Instagram at panels to pixels podcast. Same thing that you're going to get splashed on you. It's an image saying, hey, leave your thoughts in the feed, you know, feedback in the thought in your comments below. Just put them down to get some. We love to get some. Uh, If you don't feel the need that you want to do that and you want to just email us, all you have to do is email us panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels two is spelled out to you pixels and the number one at gmail.com. Write out your thoughts. We'll read them. If you feel the need that you have to have your voice heard. L, do so. We all have these cool things. Microphones, headphones, everything. A computer nowadays. Or even on your nifty phone device. And you can record your voice and just send it as an attachment. I'll play it. We'll comment on it too. And we'll have fun. And we'll take into consideration what you had to thought. And, and our, uh, our thoughts about your thoughts about the episode be greatly appreciated anything it doesn't necessarily have to be about the episode that we are covering at the moment it could be something that we've done before or even if you hated it a lot of people let us know let us know this tell us uh you know and then on top of that we can be found on youtube as well so obviously i get feedback through youtube all you have to do is search panels to pixels podcast so remember that panels to pixels podcast on youtube follow us there you could see the icon you could see the logo the panels to pixels podcast logo it's orange red yellow all the cool things that um, kirk manley has done for us and uh just subscribe hit the bell to be notified when a new episode is up and if you need to feel that you need to put a, a comment below on what we were talking about at that time or anything. Just put it in. I'll get notified. I get the email and uh, we'll read it on the podcast or the next podcast as it is. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, unless you really want to show some love and affection to us, because I really do enjoy the fact that when people put out a rating or review, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Five stars are always greatly appreciated, especially when there's comments. And that's the best way for people to get us noticed other than word of mouth. So please do so. Uh, Next week, what are we doing, Becky, next week, you and I? Next week, we are covering Snowpiercer Season 4, Episode 8, entitled By Weeping Crossed. Awesome. Interesting. Well, that wraps up our coverage of Snowpiercer Season 4, Episode 7, Moth to the Flame. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This is Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, good day. Good night. Good evening. <laughs> what is it he says um, in... Uh, the Truman Show. Jim Carrey, The Truman Show. Yeah. Good morning, and if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I am going to start signing off that way, FYI. All right, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>